All right, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to week seven of the UBL versus this time automatic in his new seal, Nusleaves. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that name. And for what it's worth, as always, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I'm butchering so many names. Um, honestly, though, make sure to check if anything this, well, this play around really. He is just about to join in the VBA or VBE, uh, which is a bigger draft league, format league, um, with uh, a few of the big guys like Pokemon, Pokemon, and stuff like that. Um, definitely boosted his channel, and it's very worth that. Making really, really good quality content. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm actually quite jealous. Um, I don't know how he does it, but it looks so great. So I always just really, really interesting watching his stuff because he's so in depth. And work with so many ways in the wife battle he plays much like vipsis absolutely and the way he's playing bulky offensive play style which uh, he is absolutely made for longer games and we usually don't play well versus that so my team is gonna kind of reflect that as um, i'm not gonna bring the um, hyper hyper offensive team but i can only speculate on what he is bringing and we're supposed to have this game on um, First day, we would go in today on Friday, and the reason for that was because the heat is just hitting us that hard, and uh, my daughter actually really, really, really is struggling. Not that he, she's ill or anything like that, but she just she refuses to fall asleep, and doesn't help that she's a bit sick uh, due to tick bites, and really hasn't necessarily recovered. So, you know, antibiotics and stuff like that is just is a nightmare. Luckily, she's asleep now, so recording. Um, so with that said, uh, my opponent team here is um, with, it looks terrible, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, Tornadus, Cobelion, Memoswine, Tangro, Slowking, Aromatis, Drapion, Flygon, Tauros, Electavar, and Megagron. Uh, for me, the one that stands out here is that he has a big fluctuation on his speed here. There are Pokemon here that are really fast, looking at Tornadus. Um, fly on Tauros, um, Electabad, I guess, and Rapion, which are the speedier tiers there, but then there are a lot of really slow mounts or slowish. Mammoth Swine falls somewhere in between. Um, same with Aromati Slow King. Um, they really aren't that speedy. Tangrove isn't that either. While there's a really good defensive response overall, I feel um, it will fall behind versus me, or at least so I hope. My team is as follows, is rather simple, yet should be able to get some value here. Like I said, we're naturally slower this time around. Uh, so we're going first and foremost with an adamant variant of um, Sarah Aura with Sugarberry, mainly here to be able to try to take earthquakes from uh, Mammoth Swine, uh, to be able to stay in it against that. Um, some HP investment, the speed investment is only for Tornadus. Um, I was considering going Tim or Jolly and get some more bulk in there, but yeah, because I really want the damage output. Because their aura is is setting the bar for his speed here, so he has to use a scarf to be able to deal with it. So it's a it's a cool thing to have. Attacks, plasma fist, fire punch, hidden power, um ice, I do believe. Good thing I saw that hidden power is supposed to be uh, the ability will fly on which walls this Pokemon to an extent and close combat. So really straightforward. Um, other Pokemon here is Mega Scissor. Uh, Admin Virgin's time around more offensively in Bond. Um, stats here are, of course, with a lot of Bolt, be able to come in on Mammoth Swan and take it on really well. Um, the only thing I do fear to an extent is that we could be seeing an abandoned Mammoth Swan. And that Pokemon not only does it. Uh, one we want me, but it's a Pokemon I can't switch into. I'll lose to a combination of two earthquakes and I can't oak away with a bullet punch. That's something I do fear. Something I've used myself, I should say, which is why I fear it. Uh, combinations here are bullet punch, U turn, Roost, and superpower. Roost is only there because there are matchups here that we do survive with. And when a Pokemon here that can actually distribute um, um, Will O Wisps, so uh, Scissor should be able to deal with them rather well. Um, and yeah, the reason we don't have something like Defog is it because we brought Skunk Tag, I should say. Um, because, uh, well, I'm using a team that's clearly weak to rocks, so um, needed something for that. Chandelure here is one of those really, really niche sets. Modest variant with Culverberry, 
um, barely any speed. Uh, we basically have a speed tier for barely remember, but uh, I think the speed was actually in case Agron wanted to be some kind of speedy variant, but that's what's really about it. Uh, besides that, this is a very, very, very fat Chandelo, and uh, its main use here is uh, actually to come in on Conkeldor if it's forced to. Uh, but the main response here is that it just deals well with Agron, it deals well with um, um, Drapion to an extent, and um, it can, we can bait it for going for potential pursuit and we can burn it in return. Pain Split is here for the switch ins. Um, most certainly, Conkiller is going to be one of those Pokemon that can really want to Pain Split in case I need to sack something versus a Drain Punch. Shadow Ball and Fire Blast is perfect coverage for this matchup. Um, neutral coverage, you'd say. And uh, yeah, that's about it. This is a very, very stolid Pokemon. Barely, I barely need any speed investments here because, like I said, the fluctuation of the speed is quite big. Uh, Mammoth one wins versus this Pokemon, so I can't switch in or stay in, I guess you say, versus that. And I'm really looking at it, I don't have a fair switch in towards, <laughs> towards this team versus Mammoth Wine. Um, then we have Skunk Tiger or Flower from Bambi. Um, Bear. <laughs> anyway, uh, Adamant, Rocky Helmet. Um, basically, here we're really, really, really offensive with a lot of HP. Uh, the idea is to kind of pursue trap things, but quite frankly, Defong was an option. Uh, I didn't need a speed investment, but I could gather some bulk. Uh, we can take on the likes of uh, Tiger quite well with this Pokemon, and Aromatis does not enjoy this. Um, that's about it. Like, this was a very, very niche pick for me to bring. Uh, basically, it was debated, I would debate it by Glygar and, uh, and Skunk Tank because, like I said, Scissor needed super power to be able to deal with uh, Aggron for this matchup. So, Skunk Tank ended up being the one I picked, and uh, it's basically picked because of defogging and Sucker Punch. I believe I can do some damage output here, but quite frankly, this is a Pokemon that very well could be sacked against Conkeldor for Drain Punch and just retaliate with Rocky Helmet in Aftermath. So that's the thought process here. We'll see how that works. Um, then we have Tornadus. I was going to say, but no, this is a response for Tornadus in Guarded War. Uh, Modest Variant Assault Fest with Trace, of course. Um, Stat Distribution, a lot of special events. And um, basically, you have a lot of Pokemon that are very, very good special offensive. Uh, we're looking at Tornadoes, we're looking at Tangrove, Slowking, Aromatis. This Pokemon not only does it want we want them, but it can deal with them rather well. Uh, the combination here is rather simple. Moonblast, Psy Shock, Focus Blast, and Shadow Ball. Um, Shadow Ball is um, a meaningless filler, if I remember correctly. Um, it basically is there for Slowking if I need to. Uh, I was considered Thunderbolt, but it does allow Flygon to come in safely. Um, so rather get chip on that. Uh, Moonblast is of course possible nuke versus everything since it's only real switching is Agron, which could very well uh, get O code by Focus Blast because of my modest set. Uh, but besides that, super simple. And then we've got Jarados, which is an intimidate variant with uh, you know walk and bury to be able to take the likes of um, well, what is it now? Um, but any electric move, clearly. Uh, Adamant variant is mainly here to be able to, well, nuke anything that comes in and switch in this Pokemon because it forces switches. Um, its main niche is that after one Dragon Ass, we should be able to do outspeed Tornadoes. Um, I was considering going Jolly, but quite frankly, the damage output is not there, and I want to be really, really strong by default, so it's a small risk by me, but quite frankly, I believe it's the right call, at least, so I hope. Um, but yeah. It really is a Pokemon that I think naturally works very well. Uh, the combination here is Bounce, Waterfall, Dragon Dance, and Earthquake. Um, I should say, I was considering Fly MC also, mainly to be able to take out Tangrove directly, but uh, there is no way staying with Tangrove versus this set. And uh, Earthquake is only there for, um, well, I guess, I should say, uh, Agron and Drapion. But quite frankly, Waterfall shoots should suffice there to an extent. Uh, but that's a complete team. Um, I kind of want to level with what Pokemon I did consider, but it really was only one Pokemon that really stood out, and that was Kieran Black. Um, I had it yesterday, decided to uh, 
uh, it was actually switched out for um, uh, Chandelure. Uh, decided that I really didn't have a switch in for Tornadoes to like that extent, so Chandelure parried that rather well. So it was just the last second call, really. The Cura variant was a very, very special defensive Roost variant here. Uh, was considering Scarf to be able to deal with his potential best Scarfer, which would be Mammoth Swine. Uh, but that's really it. So with that said, let's go into the game. I'm terrible at these transitions. I really am. So right, the battle itself. Well, I never really covered what I thought I meta would bring, but I'll, I'll see it as it is. I was really surprised not to see Tangaro, which I thought really was well, doing well versus me, or to that extent, I guess. Very good check with his Serora. This also means that he has a different kind of trick up his sleeve, so he decided to bring a team of Mamoswine, Megagrand, Conkelder, Drapion, Tauros, and uh, Tornadus. And probably one that took me most pride was Tauros. I think Tauros is really reliable, it definitely works well here when it comes to that. But well, let's just face it, Scissor isn't a Pokemon that can stain versus that, but Sean Lord should be able to shake that Pokemon quite well unless it carries a Rock Slide, which is a sheer force filled move. But besides that, um, I felt really comfortable here going into this game. I decided to lead off with my Jaros, mainly because it is a Pokemon that, uh, well, he doesn't have a resist towards waterfalls. I felt that was a really, really easy lead for me to bring up with. So, really with that covered, let's go into the game itself. I should also say that I'm recording this, you know, semi-live since we actually had this battle today, today. And I just really, really, really wanted this upload to kind of come up today. Uh, so he decides to lead off with his Mamoswine. Which, quite frankly, it's scary. It's tough for me to deal with that head on. Um, but, um, well, he does outspeed me. I was feeling he was going to go for rocks, but he goes for rock slide. And it does a very good chunk. Shows me at least it isn't adamant. And we don't get flings. Get the waterfall off. We should have a good chance of taking it out. Unfortunately, we failed to do so. It barely survived. And I'm gonna, of course, switch out here, go into my Scissor Fulgore. And um, I'm gonna take this earthquake recently. Well, Rock Slide, I mean. Uh, but yeah, this was uh, at this point, I didn't know it was Scarfed. I do find that out later. Um, considering he survived, I was really thinking it was Focus Sash, but of course, it wasn't. So he goes to Big Bird. I go directly for a bullet punch here because, uh, well, I, I really needed to take this Pokemon out. Um, all things considered, I felt I probably should have brought Skunk Tank and pursued Crapid because it would have been a golden opportunity. Uh, considering Mammoth Swan actually turns out to be quite a threat here, more so since I don't have rocks. Now, Bullet Punch does almost half of this Pokemon's HP, and I was thinking he was going to go for Heatwave just snagging the KO, so I'm bringing Gardevoir trying to take this hit. Uh, but it turns out, as we snag that Regenerator, that this is a Fly MC variant, but not only that, um, we are not necessarily able to take this hit quite well. I never calculated this kind of damage I put. I was thinking about Sludge Wave and stuff like that, which I absolutely do not appreciate. But Super Saiyan Scatrack was not in my mind. Uh, and, more, and more so, like with that said, uh, I was very unsure how much damage this would do, but it turns out to do more than half of my HP. And that's more than enough. Uh, so I'm not going to stay in, uh, thinking he's going to go for U-Turn or Sludge Wave and uh, Flower, of course, my Skunk Tank to do really well versus any of those moves. But it goes for U-Turn, as you guys will see, it doesn't do necessarily all that much, and we get a Rocky Helmet residual damage onto the Big Bird, uh, which means that his Regenerator is kind of lost, but it brings gains, which is to come together, and we see Flamer activated directly. So it's time to pretty much pick a sack. Uh, I actually decided to bring in Miraval because I was thinking I could at least say a few good hits here um, or at least force him for a knockoff. It goes with Thunder Punch predicting my Jaro switch in, so that was really good on him. Um, here's the thing, I can take a knockoff quite well here and I can go for Pain Split just to kind of get in range and not stall him I shouldn't say, but just bringing him down slightly as I can just secure a Fire Blast. But it brings in Drapion, so we got a lot of HP back here, but not only that, uh, we can easily here go for a Will-O-Wisp. He is actually going for Pursuit, which is great. Pop our Culberberry, which I really want to save to the Conkelder. But for what it's worth, we at least get that popped and we can retaliate. And it shows me that it isn't necessarily that offensive. 
Um, I was really surprised with that damage output. I was thinking it was going to bring bring me down below half somewhere, but it isn't. And uh, for my money, this is just good for me as I can switch in Sister. Now I know it isn't uh, fully offensive. I can easily here stay in versus this and go for a potential roost and feel quite well. And since it goes for knockoff here, yeah, there is really no way to switch in here for me as um, he's going to showcase, of course, it's just a fire fang. That's quite all right. And um, thinking about it in hindsight, I had the means here to actually potentially snag a flash fire with, uh, of course, my Sean Lore, but the switch in and out game wouldn't be good for me since I don't have speed or anything on this team of the speedier threats. So I decided to actually stay in and take another fire fang, uh, which leaves me pretty much in the same area where I was before. But the positive part is I go for U turn. Now, I was pretty sure I was going to take him out, but. No, it wasn't offensive, so of course it's bulky. So it survived that. I'm going to bring Voldhard. And since they're not in range, we very well take him out. I've just decided to go for Dragon Dance. Um, basically, to force his uh, Mammoth Spine to go for Nice Shot. Um, because I, if it's Scarfed, I really just really, really wanted to secure that it's um, Scarfed without. Um, oh, what do you call it? Um, without Ice Shot. That's what we want to check out. Uh, but yeah, he goes poison, poison jab over Thunder Fang, which I thought was going to have. But Walking Bird would save me anyway. Uh, so brings in Mammoth Wine, like I said, predicting die shot and um, switching out here. So I go to Skunk Tank, uh, the flower, and here's where I do actually a slight um, misprediction. I was actually going to go for Pursuit, uh, but I went for Sucker Punch instead, and I just it really 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 was bothering me because i knew it was a it wasn't a misclick but more a thought pursuit was my second option which of course it wasn't and yeah all of a sudden uh iron comes in for free i lose momentum and i'm feeling really 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 dumb but it's quite right you know we get the mega illusion on the mega iron and well that just means fire blast is now doing damage on this pokemon which it didn't necessarily do before and it goes for safe playing over self rock i was really really hoping to go for eq because that would have been choke of a line time for me but he switches out just want to stay and take this fire blast as uh, the big bird comes in and uh, there's a reason i went with modest hair this is just gonna pop that bird and chandelure showcasing that while i'm terrible with it it still does well even if i'm not trying that's kind of nice as of course mammoth swine is back and this time I can lock myself into Earthquake. Uh, I decide to shack off or, or sack my Vault Heart here to the rocks and see where he locks himself into. Um, that was really my only play. And um, still, like at this heat of the moment, it felt very tough seeing. So he locked himself into Earthquake, and that's quite right. We can take that hit really well since we know it's Jolly. Uh, so I'm actually going to go for Roost here. There's no reason for me not to because I really want my sister to stay healthy. Uh, because there are matchups here that can be kind of shaky still. So it brings gains. Um, I had no idea what to do here. Um, or I had one option, and that was pretty much sack play my skunk tank. Um, I was feeling he's going to go for Drain Punch. So since it's so close to his full HP, I decided to go for U turn. So now I know he's going to go for Drain Punch, or at least so I think at this time. So I'm going to bring skunk tank, and I'm going to sack the skunk tank. Um, I was considering bringing Guard of War, but it felt risky if he decided to do something else. And he actually decides to go for a Thunder Punch. And this, is, of course, will knock us out because we are still Skunk Tank. We're a terrible Pokemon. But Aftermath in combination with Rocky Helmet brings this Pokemon down so much. So all of a sudden, in theory, um, Falkor can come in and just snag a kill if he wants to. So, 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 so that's what we decide to do. Uh, <laughs> Since we outspeed it anyway, we can go safely here for a bullet punch. It doesn't tend necessarily save switch into bullet punch. Uh, besides, I guess you should say um, Aggron, but we can pipe it versus Zaz, so we doesn't we don't fear it. Uh, so at this time we're looking kind of stellar as a bring in titanium and I have no idea what this Pokemon wanna do. Uh, I decided to go for U-turn thinking that fire punch would probably be the safest bet, and Guard War should easily be able to take that, and we should be able to retail with a focus blast and hopefully connect. Uh, but actually decides to go for another round of rock, so I can only assume uh, he was thinking that um, uh, that I can go for defile, which I clearly lack here, unfortunately. 
So we go for Wave Blast, we do connect the Focus Blast, and uh, unfortunately for us, it isn't enough, but it's got him close to. He goes for Heavy Slam, and of course, Filter is not enough here to save Gardevoir. That's, that's a dead Gardevoir. <laughs> I don't know if a crit matters, I never calculate it, I just thought I was going to die anyway. Uh, so we're going to bring in Falder again. Um, I was leveling back and forth if I should have brought my Sarah or not. I think that was kind of a shock for me as uh, I U-turn anyway, thinking he was going to try to preserve aggro, which of course is not, it's a dead Pokemon. Sarah or would have made a ton, ton more sense as uh, that's what I'm bringing now. And here's where things get rather interesting, I should say, because it brings in Mamoswine, and um, I'm actually going to stay in because I am Sugarberry. He was thinking that um, I was not going to sack this Pokemon, and he goes to Red Bull, his Tauros, and um, he's of course a life of variance, which you build out speed as Pokemon no matter what. And I decided instead of go for differential here, um, and of course killing the Red Bull, um, I was going to showcase that I was um, uh, still or Sugar Bear variant. So uh, when this Taurus falls, I'm actually going to sack out Mirawal, my Chandelure, which did tremendously well here. I'm super proud of Chandelure. Never thought a Pokemon ever would work well as um, just to showcase that I should be able to take an earthquake on this Pokemon. Now, after the game was due, I guess I should really cover this. It actually turns out with uh, two rounds of Stealth Rocks plus that um, I wasn't necessarily that much bulk invested as I thought I was going into this game. That's the second crit he snags from me. What, what the hell is going on? Anyway, it actually turns out that even with Shookerberry and two rounds of Stealth Rocks, I am not able to survive this earthquake. I was at full HP, absolutely. Uh, but I was thinking I had more bulk invested into me, and it turns out that had he got off an earthquake versus me and not risked it and switched it into Tauros, he very well could have won this game. And he actually, in theory, choked. And I thought I was going to showcase, you know, why I stayed in, which clearly was a mistake. And what will do snag a victory here of 1-0? It's a bittersweet one because I don't believe I did the ideal play. And consider I had a means to deal with this mammoth one with my skunk tank and pursuit and whatnot. I felt really dumb here. Um... I should have had a, in, in risk of sounding really gutsy here, I should have had a bigger victory versus automatic uh, had I done the right play with uh, Skunk Tank, uh, but I didn't, and that was really, really, really dumb of me, um, because I had the means and it would have worked out greatly here. Uh, I failed to do so, and uh, like I said, it wasn't a more a misclick, but more I thought Pursuit was in my second row, but it turns out it was Sucker Punch, and you know, that's my mistake. Uh, we do get our momentum back, but we also do the wrong play versus Mamoswine, which turned out to be the right one because he thought I was smarter than that, which I clearly wasn't. Um, so this leaves us with 2-5. So yeah, we're we not hot. Like, again, getting free victory or losses from the season, it's it's tough. Uh, but it also makes it sort of automatic to actually reach playoff here. Um He's absolutely not, he's, I believe, 4-2 four, four or something like that, so he's, or 4-3. No matter what, he's still very well can make playoff, but we definitely made things problematic for him. Uh, he absolutely needs to win at least once to guarantee himself in the playoff, and, uh, well, I guess I screwed myself over with my record, but quite frankly, uh, it all depends on how everybody else is doing, whether or not we ourselves make playoff. Um, I'm still in the running. But um, like, if I'm getting one more loss, I'm out. That's that's just it, and that's very tough for me of knowing. Um, so, to Automag, I really wanted to say thank you for the game, and uh, I, I want to say sorry for that last part, as I do absolutely kind of realize how bad that play really was. And uh, he loses because he had the optimal play of actually just winning and stay safe, and he didn't because he thought I was better than that, and I clearly wasn't. And it it sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this game and of course as always check out my opponent's side here uh, which of course will link down below to Automagic. like I said this one was really really good with Wi-Fi Ballers on YouTube and one of the best Pokétubers I know really enjoy his content and I'm sure you guys will too so with that said thanks for watching and I'll see you next video till then take care bye